The Alabama Farmers Federation and the Alabama Farmers Cooperative proudly present Simply Southern with your hosts, Jim Allen and Mary Johnson. Good morning and welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Jim Allen. And I'm Mary Johnson. This morning, teachers are becoming the students. Samantha Carpenter is finding out how elementary school instructors are learning creative ways to teach students where their food and clothes come from. One inch of rain equals more than 27,000 gallons per acre. Today we'll visit a farm that's attempting to capture the water that falls on its chicken houses and use it for animals rather than allowing it to simply drain away. And Sydney Feltz of Bonnie Plants is showing us a delicious new way to prepare a staple of backyard gardens everywhere, eggplant. But first out of the gate, we'll visit with a farm in Montgomery County that specializes in an entirely different type of growing. Simply Southern continues in just a moment. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the Quality Co-op Store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your Quality Co-op Store. There's one near you. The blessing of Alabama agriculture is more than three meals a day. It means independence from foreign nations, freedom to pursue other jobs and activities, conservation of natural resources, and preservation of family values. For 93 years, the Alabama Farmers Federation has brought together the men and women whose work fills our plates and fuels the American dream. For nearly 50 years, the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama have been giving young people an opportunity to visit our nation's capital, where they learn about the value of electric cooperatives and the importance of grassroots advocacy. Top students join with thousands of others touring monuments, landmarks, and meeting with their congressional delegation. The Rural Electric Youth Tour Program, just one more way the Electric Cooperatives of Alabama are investing in the future of our state. The way we communicate is always changing. My friends and I text a lot when we can't be together, and even when we are. As an alpha agent, even my customers text me. It's just the world we live in, and it works. It's another way we provide great customer service. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. Just try texting an 800 number. Last year, the nation cheered as American pharaohs surged across the finish line, completing the first triple crown in nearly four decades. Today, American pharaoh has retired to an equine paradise. But for other horses leaving the track behind, life after the race can sometimes be the highest hurdle of all. Elaine Carroll clearly has a passion for horses. Having bred and worked with top-of-the-line thoroughbreds throughout her career, she can size up a prime racehorse with the best of them. A quarter horse is usually at their top speed, their four stride out of the gate. These guys take a little more time to get rolling, but once they get rolling, it, they're gonna leave that quarter horse behind. They're just amazing. They can run all day long, and they will. The racehorse is a beloved sporting icon, but even for the best of these horses, it's a job that will only occupy a short part of their lives. At her Bar L farm near Montgomery, Elaine is preparing many of these retiring racers for a life beyond the track. Where I furnished racehorses at one time, I'm now making the circle and getting retired horses that are through racing to bring them back home and retrain them to make show horses, trail horses, all around horses uh, for, for, for an individual. A lot of the owners and trainers know that I'm very, very particular about the horses that I get. I am not a rescue. I get the best of the best that I can get off the track. Sally Johnson has been riding in off-track horse competition since she was six years old. As Elaine's primary rider, adapting these horses to a new routine is a process that begins before she ever touches the saddle. 
we want to know as much as we can about the horse, just what we call on the ground, meaning that without even getting on them, we pull them out of the stall, hand graze them, groom them, just see what they're like. We just try to kind of get an idea of them before we even get on them. It's a whole new life for these horses. At the track, everything is so fast paced. Here, it's, it's more down key. Here, they learn to be a horse again. Much of the work Sally and Elaine do with these thoroughbreds is deliberate and routine. For the average Mr. Ed, it probably doesn't seem so bad. But for a horse used to the adrenaline of racing, the slower pace can be a challenge in itself. Typically, I'll do a week of just basic walking, trotting, just easy stuff, let them see that we're not doing anything that's um, too difficult or, you know, not going to the track to race. And then after about a month that they're doing well, um, I'll introduce them to the jumps. You can't, you can't push them. And they let you know what they're ready for. Usually they get a little prancy when you get on them. They, they, they think they're going to go run. But for the most part, they settle pretty quick. It, it's, it's really kind of boring for them. It's almost like when you get off of them, they look at you like, this is it? Many of the horses trained at Bar L Farm go on to professional careers in the show ring. For others, they may live out their days as a beloved riding companion. Although building a foundation in these horses for either possibility is their mission, for Sally and Elaine, finding the right fit is the most important part of it all. I have had people come here to look at one horse that they were, they were determined that was the horse that they wanted that, that just wasn't a good match. They ended up buying another horse that I had that it was a perfect match. And to this day, they still thank me for that. It has to be a perfect match. That's the most important thing. These horses, they deserve that person. They deserve their retirement in a forever home. And that's what I look for is that forever home. Over the years, Elaine and Sally have made some pretty happy horses and even happier owners. For a number of success stories and pictures, or even contact information if you think you may be interested in one of Bar L's horses, visit the farm's website at barlfarm.com. You know, Jim, I'm from Kentucky originally, and up there there's racehorses everywhere. So it's really nice to see that there's an Alabama place that's finding these racehorses a forever home. I've been to a lot of farms, but I've never been to one like this. If anybody's interested in a really pretty horse, these folks have them. Absolutely. Enjoy those for a long time. Too. Oh, yeah. Coming up next, teaching the teachers. Samantha Carpenter is going back to school where farmers are showing instructors how to teach their students about where their food and clothing come from. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. Today's farming operation is more complex than ever before, with precision agriculture becoming an integral piece to farm management. AccuField provides precision agriculture technologies and site-specific management capabilities in a simplified and interactive format, helping you put all the pieces of the farming puzzle together. For more information, visit us at www.accufield.com. Alabama wheat and feed grain farmers grow food, fuel, and freedom. Their harvest helps feed Alabama's multi-million dollar livestock, catfish, and poultry industries while reducing America's dependence on foreign countries for energy and food. By combining their strength with farmers of other commodities, feed grain growers are fueling the economic growth of Alabama communities. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG Fund's education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. Nothing brings the family together like U.S. farm-raised catfish. American catfish farmers are dedicated to producing a premium, healthy catfish with a consistently mild, sweet flavor. Because we take as much pride in our work as you do in your cooking. 
From our family farms to your family's table, you can be sure you're getting the highest quality fish because your family deserves the best. U.S. Farm-Raised Catfish. For nearly 30 years, the Alabama Ag in the Classroom program has shown teachers across the state new ways to educate students about farming in Alabama. This week, Samantha Carpenter visits a Montgomery Elementary School to see some of the fun and creative methods these teachers are bringing back to their classrooms. This June, teachers throughout Alabama will gather in Prattville for the Ag in the Classroom Summer Institute an annual three-day workshop promoting education about farming and its importance to our state. This is a great way for our educators across Alabama to take information back to their classrooms so that students will know where their food and fiber comes from. Don Ellis teaches third through fifth grade special education students at Peter Crump Elementary School in Montgomery. Two years ago, she attended the Summer Institute in Birmingham, a rewarding experience she has since taken back to her classroom. Ag in the class really poured into educators about the importance of ag teaching agriculture and um, actually taking us to local school gardens um, to show us how they were being implemented all across the state. Dawn's students maintain a school garden, growing a variety of vegetables and herbs. Many of these students live in the city and have had little exposure to the concept of growing their own food. Seeing their lessons in class literally come to life has had a clear impact for these children. We've seen them more likely to eat things that they weren't like, uh, likely to eat in the past because they had a hand in it. And so they actually look forward to cooking the, the radish dips and eating the carrots. Among the books, magazines, DVDs, and lesson ideas available to teachers at the Ag in the Classroom Summer Institute, teachers particularly enjoy the make and take sessions, which use easy to put together crafts as a fun way to teach about the state's agricultural commodities. Today what we are going to do to spotlight one of our uh, commodities uh, here in Alabama is we are going to make a paper plate chicken. If you notice we have drawn hands and these are going to be the feathers of the chicken. These long strips are, are our legs. We kind of just fold them in similar to a fan and then we are going to glue feet onto the legs and we have a beak and then we will put Google eyes also on our chicken. This one is a dancing chicken. You see his hands are kind of up and down. So, Miss Ellis, you, um, you've participated a lot. Which one seems to be your favorite so far that you've done? Um, I, we really enjoyed the bees um, as well as the, the chickens. Um, and I think that a lot of the make and takes offer an opportunity to um, get the kids active hands on. And the students are not the only ones benefiting. Teachers at the Institute are exposed to our state's agricultural community, touring farms throughout the areas where the conference is held. A recent addition to these tours have been panels where teachers learn about the issues affecting our commodity producers while being able to ask questions they may have as well. The farmers who were there came up and said, you know, this is something that you should really consider doing each year. We feel like that this is really something that they will take back with them and learn from. It was a, a, a very good wholesome experience um, where I felt like I took away a lot of knowledge and materials but also made a lot of connections there and uh, I feel like those relationships uh, were, were built there that wouldn't have been built anywhere else. For Simply Southern, I'm Samantha Carpenter. The 2016 Ag in the Classroom Summer Institute is coming to Prattville this June if you're an educator and would like to apply, or just want to know more about Ag in the Classroom, visit alabamaaitc.org. You know, it's really interesting to me the way they use paper plates and egg cartons to get agriculture across to those children. Right, and that's the important part. They feel like they're having fun, but they're really learning about where their food comes from through farming. That's right. When Simply Southern continues, We'll visit a farm that's saving the planet and saving money at the same time by conserving one of our most important natural resources, water.
Have some respect. Pick it up, man. Did you just litter? Take pride in your school. Pick it up, man. Clean it up, dude. Besides keeping your campus clean, adopt a mile with Roadside Cleanup. Attend the next Coastal Cleanup Day or pitch in on the annual Spring Cleanup Campaign. Make a difference by picking up litter and... Don't drop it on Alabama! Alabama wheat and feed grain farmers grow food, fuel, and freedom. Their harvest helps feed Alabama's multi-million dollar livestock, catfish, and poultry industries while reducing America's dependence on foreign countries for energy and food. By combining their strength with farmers of other commodities, feed grain growers are fueling the economic growth of Alabama communities. Alabama soybean farmers help fuel the state's economy. Soybeans are used to make clean, renewable biodiesel and are a key ingredient in feed for poultry, catfish, and livestock. Soybeans are used in dozens of products we use every day. But best of all, soybean farmers generate $258 million and more than 4,000 jobs for Alabama's economy, all while helping conserve our natural resources. Explore the power of soy. Alabama's poultry industry ranks second in the nation, producing more than a billion birds a year. Over a year's time, just one chicken house can use a half billion gallons of water. And there are about 12,000 houses in the state. As Kevin Worthington tells us, scientists at Auburn are working on a way to save farmers money on their water bill, and at the same time, conserve one of Alabama's precious natural resources. In an effort to impact both the environment and his bottom line in a positive way, all Coleman County farmer Kevin Allen had to do was look up to the sky. Allen, with the help of Auburn University's National Poultry Technology Center, installed a system to catch and store rainwater for Allen's four poultry houses. Well, it made sense when I first heard about it. I talked to Gene Simpson from Auburn, uh, and he, he explained it to me, and I seen it on another farm, just a prototype. and. Uh, kind of thought it was a good idea, but it was a lot, a lot more complicated, and this system looks a little better. Uh, just made sense catching rainwater, uh, water chickens with it, and city water around here is getting, it's getting more expensive. So uh, that's just another way we can save, save money. It's very simple. Just get gutters on the chicken houses. They, there's pipes. It runs through, catches it into a big bladder. It's all gravity fed to that bladder. Uh, the bladder then, uh, there's a pump, pumps it out of the bladder. It pumps it through a filter and uh, some UV lights to kill any of the coliform that's in it. And once it comes out of there, it pumps it back to the chicken houses. It's, it's, it's very simple. Allen's newly installed system is a refined version of the National Poultry Technology Center's first prototype and can collect 100,000 gallons of water with only two inches of rain. To the best of our knowledge, this is the second unit in Alabama, the second one in the U.S. The first one was a prototype system that we began on another farm, uh, oh, about 40 miles from here, back in 2009. And it's been operational, but it, it didn't have uh, all the bells and whistles that we have here. Uh, we're not aware of any others that exist in the U.S. Uh, that are on poultry farms, uh, certainly not to this degree anyway. Within the last two or three years, water has increased on the water system I'm on. I'm pay I don't have a descending rate. Used to, we had a descending rate. The more you use, the cheaper it got. Now, uh, we're paying somewhere around 950 for a thousand gallons. Uh, in a year's time, that adds up to somewhere around $20,000 on these four houses. So if you supply, if this rainwater will supply 70%, which is what we think it will, and this area, North Alabama, shows to to be a pretty high rainfall usage for the year, I mean, amount for the year. I think we'll have somewhere around 70% of the water, so it could be, could be up to $15,000 savings a year. Simpson says farmers with rising water costs and availability issues are prime candidates for the one-of-a-kind system. We have some serious water issues uh, across the country. Uh, that are facing our poultry growers and if we can if we can use systems like this to help alleviate some of those problems then I think every, everybody wins. Uh, environmentally uh, it, it's a win-win, uh, economically it's a win-win and, and I just think it's, it's going to be very good for the industry. We're, we're going to see water rates 
in some areas go higher and higher and we're going to see the quality of water in some areas get, get worse and worse and this gives us a chance to, to address both those. For Simply Southern, I'm Kevin Worthington. Believe it or not, in some areas farmers pay more for water than they do for the electricity or the gas they use to heat the houses. Designers of the system anticipate that captured rainwater could replace 90% of the water the farm is now paying for. That is such a huge savings, and this is just showing the ingenuity of farmers in reusing something that they've been given. True enough, they are the original environmentalists. Very true, good stewards of the land. After the break, the oven is heated up and all the spices are ready, as Sydney Phelps of Bonnie Plants shows us a delicious new way to prepare an eggplant right out of your backyard garden. When AJ was born with a heart defect, we practically lived at the hospital. We weren't prepared for that. My Alpha customers, my Alpha family made sure we had everything we needed. Now I'm even more motivated to help take care of them. Who I am fits what I do. I am Alpha. For the best agents in the business, call Alpha. What one thing can you say about your local quality co-op store? You can trust us. You get what you need for your farm, for your lawn and garden, and the safest products for your pets. We're locally owned and operated, and you can trust that we care about our community and the people in it. So if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, the quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the job done. All this plus friendly, knowledgeable advice. Your quality co-op store. There's one near you. Support healthy food from local farmers by purchasing a Farming Feeds Alabama license plate. The TAG funds education and promotion efforts, including Ag in the Classroom, Agricultural Scholarships, and Youth Programs. Get your Ag Tag today. We believe a plant should be more than a plant. This one is. It's all you need for your garden to succeed. Because it's a Bonnie plant. It represents hundreds of varieties of Bonnie's quality veggies and herbs. But more, it's from generations of Bonnie people who are passionate about sharing their love of gardening with you. Look for this little Bonnie plant and a whole family of plants like it in your garden center. Bonnie plants, so you'll know how to grow. Hey folks, Sydney Phelps here with Bonnie Plants. Now I know a lot of the time we're always working with some type of protein, whether it be pork, chicken, steaks, well, we've had a couple of comments and questions about meals for vegetarians, so we decided to do this, and eggplant is a great way to use that. Um, eggplant is utilized in so many different things. People can make them uh, into burger patties like they do with large portobello mushrooms. Same things can go with, with eggplants. Now, you can use this in a couple of different facets, whether you be grilling it, roasting it, uh, or just traditionally baking it. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice this up, and I'm gonna turn these into roasters, so to speak. So we're going to take the eggplant, we're going to slice it down in, and you want to do about half inch cuts. So basically, you know, good little half inch kind of steak, as you can see there. So we're going to slice this thing on down and get it ready to go. And the eggplant I'm using today is basically a black, black beauty eggplant. Um, the Ichabon eggplants is more of the Japanese style eggplant, and you can use those. If you're going to use one of those types, you want to use it cutting it long ways. Uh, versus cutting it horizontal. But while we've got that started, let's set this to the side here. And we've got a couple of different, you know, steaks here. Now the way to work this out the best is, is using some salt. Salt is going to draw, draw moisture out of the eggplant. So we're just going to sprinkle that over there and let it go. And you're going to do this to both sides. So we're going to let that salt start working. And over time, uh, however much time you got, the longer you can let it sit, the better. Uh, it's going to have a little bit of a brown liquid coming out of it, so you're going to want to put it in a, in a pan versus a cutting board like what we've got here today. But don't worry about that liquid, that's just the moisture coming out. So once we have those salted, now is when you come over, uh, you can add your oil. So we're going to use a little bit of drizzle of olive oil. Actually, before I do that, I want to put these over here onto our cooking sheet. So this is basically just a regular cookie sheet, and we've got those lined up. Take your olive oil, drizzle over top of your eggplant. Once you get that drizzled in real nice, you come back over 
Uh, and in this case, we're using black pepper. So we're gonna sprinkle some black pepper over top of them. That'll be good to go. And some herb. This is just basically a garlic herb uh, marinade or blend that you're used to seeing in a lot of Italian restaurants. Uh, you can use this. You can even top this with a marinara sauce like what we've got cooking over here. Uh, you can use that as like an eggplant parmesan. Uh, just add some fresh mozzarella cheese to it. We're gonna flip these over, get them coated. We're gonna throw them in the oven at about 350 to 400 degrees. They're gonna cook anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes and you're basically gonna get them to a nice brown crisp uh, and that's gonna give you exactly what you're looking for. You can find this recipe and other recipes at bonnieplants.com or on the mobile app, Homegrown with Bonnie Plants. You know, eggplant is something that we've never actually grown in our garden because I've never known what to do with it, but now it looks like I have a good recipe to try. Well, I like to take it and grind it up and mix it with some flour and egg and make uh, what they call fritters and deep fry them. Mighty tasty, not healthy like like SIDS, but mighty tasty. Right, well that sounds pretty good too, so two recipes to try. Other recipes and growing tips are just a few of the items you'll find at bonnieplants.com. Don't start working on your garden until you visited their website. Find out more about all the other stories we featured today by visiting their websites. BarLFarm.com has a catalog of the retired racehorses they have available, plus an entire section on their success stories of matching horses with their new owners. Alabama Ag in the Classroom has a lot of information about their program, as well as a number of classroom activities posted on their website, alabamaaitc.org. And whether it's chickens or cattle, cotton or corn, all things agriculture in Alabama can be found at the Alabama Farmers Federation's website, alphafarmers.org. If you missed an earlier episode of Simply Southern, you can get caught up at simplysoutherntv.net. And we invite you to like our Facebook page and join hundreds of other viewers who follow our show regularly. Next Sunday morning, move over Punxsutawney Phil. Here comes Sand Mountain Sound. We'll take you to Alabama's version of Groundhog Day. And we'll visit a nursery where they're going to the genetic level to develop better pine trees for the forestry industry. Thanks for watching Simply Southern this week. I'm Mary Johnson. And I'm Jim Allen. We hope you'll make plans to join us again next Sunday morning. Simply Southern is a production of the Alabama Farmers Cooperative and the Alabama Farmers Federation.